Hello and welcome. This is Matthew from Freeform. This video is about trees. Uh, my previous video was about distances. And in case if you have not watched that video, if you have missed that video, kindly um, go and watch the video. And I am providing the link to that video in the description. Okay. So both of these concepts are used in KNN or NN algorithms. Now let's see how trees are going to help you in uh, reducing the computational cost of a KNN algorithm. Right, so let's put trees on board now. Trees, I have got two types of trees. One is a KD tree, and the other one is called as an eyeball tree. Okay, so I'm going to discuss eyeball tree in my upcoming video. In this video, we will focus on KD tree, and we will also discuss at length when can we use a KD tree and what are the limitations of KD tree as well. Okay, so KD tree K stands for number of dimensions. So if you're dealing with two coordinates, it's a two-dimensional KD tree or two-dimensional tree. If you are dealing with hundred dimensions or hundred coordinates, it's called as a hundred hundred dimension tree. Okay, so how is tree how is tree how is a tree going to help you in reducing the computational cost? If you remember, in my first video, I was talking about brute force method, right? That was the basic method to find out the nearest neighbor. What that method did was if you have a query point, it will calculate all the distances between that query point to all the points in the coordinate, right? In the in the Cartesian space, uh, it either will use uh, Euclidean distance or Manhattan distance, and it'll eventually find out the minimum distance and find the nearest neighbor. So that's brute force, and then, but then as the name itself says that it's very compu it's computationally very expensive, right? Because you know you'll have to sit up and calculate all the distances. So to reduce that cost is what trees are used for, right? So basically, let's see how trees will reduce that computational cost for you. So to understand KD trees, let's take an example, right? So let's look at these are the coordinate points. Let's say you have say three, four, four, six, and say two, five, and five, eight. Okay. So these are the four points of training data points available to you and you want to fit a KD tree for this. Okay, so what KD tree will do first is to put this particular thing in an ascending order or a descending order by taking X as the reference. Okay, so if I have to put this in an ascending order, all I need to do is one, two, two, five, and then I will have three, four, four, six, and five, eight, right? So this gives me uh, the ascending order. Right, and now I'll need to quickly figure out which is the middle point. So middle point is very simple, so I don't need this anymore. So middle point of this data with respect to x will be three, right? So if I have to quickly put this in a coordinate system, see this will be one, two, three, four, and five, and say so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So this one two will be somewhere here, and then I have two five, which is going to be here, right? And then three four will be somewhere here. Three four will be here, and then four six will be somewhere here, and then I have got five eight, which may be somewhere here. Okay. So now I have since I've identified which is my middle point, I'm going to cut this into two halves by taking three of the reference point here, right? So this will give me two sides, right? Two leaves of the tree, right? Two branches of the tree. Okay. So now uh, let's say that you know if I have to put a T diagram here, so I will just get away with this point here. One, two, two, five, three, four, four, six, and five, eight. These are my points. So I'm just going to rub this and put the trees onto the left side for you to understand it easily, right? So I've got the first node of the tree which comprises of all these data sets, right? This will be my first node, right? I have all these data points. Now I've taken a decision, I'm gonna split this into two halves by three as a median. So the left side will be less than three and the right side will be greater than or equal to three, right? So let's look at what are the data points coming there. So let's the let's left side will be of one, two and two, five obviously and then the right side again I'm going to split this as 3 4 
4, 6 and 5, 8. Right? So you can see these data points here. Right? This is 1, 2 and this is 2, 5 and in this side I have got 3, 4, 4, 6 and 5, 8. Very simple. Now I can further split this in this into two halves. Right? How will I do it? I will either take 2, 5 as a point to cut or a 1, 2. How? Because this time I used x as my reference and when I'm cutting this spaces again I will use y as my reference. Right? So I can either cut or draw a line at 5 or draw a line at 2. Either way it doesn't make any difference. So if I put a, a, a line at 2 so that's going to make it 1, 2 and 2, 5. Right? These are the two different points available for me. Right? Here uh, will become say I'm, I'm, I'm cutting it by 5. Right? So I have 1, 2 on the left side which is less than 5 and this is greater than or equal to 5. Right? So I've cut it that way and here again I can either take 4, 6, 8. So 6 can be probably taken as my middle point and I'm cutting it into two halves. This is less than 6 and this is greater than or equal to 6. So that will be less than 6 will be 3, 4 for me and greater than or equal to 6 will be 4, 6 and 5, 8. Right? So this is how my tree will get formed. Right? A beautiful tree here onto the left side and the right side. Right? These are my trees. Absolutely. Right? These are my trees. So similarly I can draw it here. So less than 5 and greater than 5. Right? So I'll put a point here. These are the points and these are the points on top. And likewise greater than 6 or less than 6. So this will be the point. Right? So in this Cartesian space I can find that you know uh, in this area I've got one data point right which is on the left side which is 1 2 and on to the right side I've got another data point which is 2 5 right this is the data point and in here the space less than 6 I've got one data point which is 3 4 3 4 and then on to the right side which is on top I've got two data points one is 4 6 and the other one is 5 8 okay so far so good so in in a case where you know I have a query right I have to find out the nearest neighbor to this particular query all I will do is find out the distances between these two points whereas in a brute force method I'll have to sit and end up calculating the difference between this point to all the other data points here I'm just going to descend through the tree my query is say let's say that you know I want to figure out say 4 and 7 this is the point right so 4 and 7 I'm going to put into this tree and say that my x value is 4 so that it means it is greater than or equal to 3 so it will come here and my y value is 7 so which is greater than or equal to 6 so this will be the point so I will end up calculating only the difference between 4, 6 and 5, 8 right so I don't I can I can cut this all off right I don't really need to consider because as per my KD tree these are my supposedly nearest neighbors and I just need to figure out the distances between these two and find out the minimum distance so that will give me the nearest point but there is there is a problem in this method because this method is always the method what they just spoke about is called as approximate na nearest neighbor where uh, there could be a situation let's say that you know if this query point was say I leave it here if the query point was somewhere here or uh, let me take a better example maybe maybe here right so if I calculate the distance I will have I'm actually not calculating the distance between these two points it may so happen that you know this may be actually nearer than these and these points to this point right so here I'm actually losing out on a real nearest neighbor which I am fine with because you know my intent is not to find the nearest point but to find an approximate nearest guy whose property can be used or whose class can be used to class my query point. So it is okay but this is one of the limitations of KD trees right that you may lose the real nearest neighbor because you are cutting the tree uh, by taking the medians right. So um, there, there are advanced methods 
to consider this point as well, right? There are these are further approximations in this, um, which will slightly be computationally expensive, but will give you good results. But for now, this is okay. Approximate nearest neighbor is okay because you actually finding the nearest neighbor to get the class value, right? And that will absolutely work like a charm in this method also. And another limitation for KD tree is that uh, KD trees won't work well in high dimensional data, right? When the data is, say for instance, I'm just gonna rub this to give you a better understanding. So when the data points are of high dimensions, um, let's say that, you know, if it is uh, less than five dimensions, KD tree will work like a charm. But the moment it goes beyond five dimensions, there is something called as curse of dimensionality. Okay, so cause of dimensionality will kick in and it will make it very difficult for us to apply the KD tree. Why? Uh, I'm just taking a one dimensional example and putting some data points here, right? So let me put some data points for different, different colors, right? So here in this one dimensional space, it's very easy to identify the difference distance between the far point and the near point, right? I mean, this is the nearest point and this is obviously the farthest point. And it's very clear because everything looks similar. But the moment you go to a higher dimensional space, right? Every point will be far from each other, right? So obviously when you consider a five dimensional or a 10 dimensional space, like a cube like this, right? And you have many data points here, this point and So if I have a query here, it is in a five dimensional space, the distance between all the points, right? Will somehow look similar, right? In other words, the distance between the farthest point and the nearest point will be almost the same. Right? So this is called as the curse of dimensionality and the whole purpose of k-nearest algorithm will fail, right? Because we can't really differentiate between the nearest point and the farthest point because of the curse of dimensionality. So this works like a charm in lower dimensional space, uh, maybe less than five dimensions. More than that, KD trees are not acceptable or probably we don't administer KD trees. That's where eyeball trees will come and save us uh, to still do KNN algorithm using eyeball trees. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you like my videos, please visit this channel frequently. You will get more updates and more information about other useful algorithms, okay? For now, let me sign off. This is Matthew from Trainform. You all have a very great day. Thank you for watching.